Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to analyze the various couples on the new Netflix show, The Ultimatum. I will just say this, that personality type is relevant, but definitely not the whole story. I feel that regardless of personality type, the crux of it is the refusal to stop and try to see things from the other person's perspective. And that doesn't mean that you necessarily agree with the other person's views and conclusions, but at least try to see how and why they came to that viewpoint because that's where understanding comes. In the end, all everyone is asking is for a safe space to speak. I feel we can foster this by increasing our understanding of one another, our differences and our blind spots, using personality type as a way to almost decode the other person's language. If you're a different personality type from one another, you're speaking a different language, um, you have different reference points. With that understanding, then we can have an, an increased tolerance and patience for one another. And knowing personality type to me is almost like having a mediator or a translator between the two people so that things don't get misinterpreted. And I guess I feel emotionally drained because I see a lot of pain. We always assume other people are like us and we think, oh, you're doing that because of this, because I would do that because of this. Whereas that person might be coming from a complete different angle and we're not willing to sit and listen because we have our own insecurities and past trauma to get over first before we can be objective. So I'm going to start with Madeline and Colby, quite controversial. And I've typed these two based on obviously what I see on the show. So again, I'm only working with what information I have. I'm not claiming to know these people. Okay, so Madeline is a ISTP and Colby is an INFP. This diagram shows the cognitive functions that they have. And as you can see here, they have completely different functions. They do not share a single function. And also they don't actually share anything in common in terms of type and because one's a feeler, one's a thinker, one's intuitive, dominant, one's sensing, dominant. Probably the only thing they share is that they're both introverts. The thing with this pairing is that of the 16 types, they are as different from each other as you could get. So this means high difference, which means high chemistry. So I totally understand why they are drawn to each other, even though they seem like people from two planets. And high chemistry means also high drama because of the high likelihood of misunderstanding. I'm going to talk about Madeline first. So the first half of the show, I would sum it up as Madeline feeling like she's hot shit basically. The start of the show, Colby was the one that gave the ultimatum. He was the one that was sure about marriage and she was the one that was not decided. And Madeline was happy actually to take the opportunity of this show to explore other relationships because she's not sure about Colby and feels that Colby has a lot lacking. On day one, she quickly honed in on Randall. It's Randall. Randall? Okay. <laughs> I have not been single probably since I was 18, 17, 18 years old. I think it's toxic, but I'm excited and it's flattering. It, it feels good. My eyes on Randall. I mean, I know it's day one, but it's Randall for me right now. Who looks like Usher. And so why wouldn't she? And then Randall reciprocated. So that's a mega ego boost. And she basically had a whale of a time in the three weeks that she lived with Randall. On top of that, we have to remember, she is aware that no other woman picked Colby on the show. 
He ended up living with April because they both didn't have any other options. Madeline must have felt that she she held all the cards. And her downfall is the second half of the show, where she finds out that Randall it was actually a complete tease. He didn't actually want to sleep with her. She felt very rejected by that because being physical is her love language. <laughs> Why do you care? I don't care. I know you don't care, but I care. <laughs> Love isn't always a physical thing. It's so easy to have sex with somebody, but I don't want to put a move on Madeline. That could quite possibly change the dynamic of the small and short relationship that we had. Then Randall told her on top of that, that Colby had kissed a random girl outside the show when he was on a night out. Colby was putting the blame on him for having girls come to kiss Colby. I don't care. No, stop it. It was. I don't want to know those things. That's not what I'm worried about right now. I'm worried about me and exploring things with you. Like, you get what I'm saying? And suddenly she feels like she's not sure about anyone's affections for her. And it is at this point onwards that she is suddenly obsessed with Kobe again. On top of that, because of her type, I would argue, she decides to involve her very loud, very opinionated friends who already don't like Kobe to get involved in her relationship, to be her mediator. Baby. How about hold off the tequila a little bit? And then maybe we can have a discussion. Bye! That's ridiculous. It's all come back to you blaming me, and I'm fucking over it. When have I blamed you? <laughs> Matt, you, you gotta see this. You gotta Dude, see this. You cannot continue to deal with Please. that shit. You can't. He is making you feel bad because he keeps turning it on you. You're being brainwashed. I don't mean to be dramatic, no, honestly, but like literally, honestly, yeah. you are eating everything that he is feeding you. It's kind of insane. Which was very unproductive, ended up nowhere, especially because she hasn't left Colby, which was their advice, and she completely ignored their advice, so that, that, that would be awkward. She then also tried to put the responsibility of the decision of getting married or not on her mom. And I'm very glad that her mom very tactfully dodged that bullet and said, it's not, it's not my place. It's basically because with ISTPs, they are not they are not messy people other than when it comes to relationships because they have a very low feeling function and when the feeling function is in your fourth slot a lot of the times you don't know what to do with your own feelings actually before even that point you don't necessarily even realize what your feelings are you don't have good access to your feelings until s things get real and then when things get real, all the feelings then suddenly are conscious to you. And because you're not a feeling dominant type, you don't know what to do with it. And because on top of that, she's she's FE, extroverted feeling, she has no access to her own values and her own emotions. And she has to then feel reliant on other people's feelings and emotions, like her friends, like her family. But because the the FE is is so low, um, she doesn't do it in a very skillful, masterful way. And it's epitomized in that meeting with all her friends and Colby was there and it just ends up being a shouting match. The intention is harmony. <laughs> and a consensus, which is what Effie is about, be but because it's a lower function, she's not skilled at it, so it ends up done very, very poorly. She obviously didn't think this through, she's doing this out of stress, which is also how our lower functions manifest in stress. We're almost just chucking out all the tools in the bag to, to see what sticks at this point. You know, it, it, it looks ridiculous, but I have a lot of compassion for that. She really needs someone who is level-headed and objective and, you know, has her best interest at heart to calmly walk her through what's going on emotionally. And then let me go on to talk about 
Colby, the INFP. So why does Colby look delusional at times or manipulative or gaslighting? I think it's a few factors that I could explain with his personality type. So the main one is that he has the function extroverted sensing SE as his blind spot. What SE does is to be very in tune with what happened in reality. So as a blind spot, he has the ability to completely ignore or disassociate from the reality of what actually happened. And then with his dominant functions, extroverted intuition, NE, and introverted feeling, FI, he can create new meaning and value for the same event in his head. NE is very good at coming up with a completely different perspective. It's like if you have a Rubik's Cube, NE is basically just turning the cube to reveal a different side to you. It's the same cube, but it's like you could see it this way. You could see it this way. You could see it this way as well. That's what NE does. And with FI as a dominant as well, it, it means he has a very good mastering of emotions and values. So that's what he does to Madeline. And on top of that, he's got FI in the top spot. FI in the top spot needs its opposing function, FE, extrovert feeling, to respond to it. So FI would express its values and emotions, and it wants affirmation from FE. FE would listen to the FI and almost like a mirror, reflect it back and say, yes, I understand you. I know where you're coming from and your values and feelings are valid. And he's constantly trying to dig Effie out of Madeline. And if you look at the diagram, Madeline's Effie is in the lowest spot. It's a very reluctant spot. It's very exhausting for her to use it because in an ISTP to use Effie is basically the equivalent of saying things just to not upset people or saying things just to make people feel good. And that is not their natural state. With TI as the top spot, they care about what the truth is. They care about solving problems. And they're probably, if they're confident, if they're being themselves, the bluntest people on earth. To be with an ISTP, you have to have a strong stomach because they don't want to care about your feelings. They just want to get down to the truth. Obviously, they can be a hypocrite as well as, as all of us can be a hypocrite that, you know, they're demanding that from you, but they can't stomach the, their own truths. But with most things, ISTPs are just there to blurt out the reality. So they have SC as well. They're there for the reality and the reality of the truth, which is sort of the main clash I see with Colby and Madeline. So for example, the, the big controversy about Colby is whether he cheated or not. This is what I mean by an INFP or people with NE and FI can change the perspective and the values of the same event. So we all know that the reality is that he went out, out of the show, on nights out, and connected with other girls outside the show, right? And even formed enough emotional connections to talk to these girls for weeks about his problems with Madeline. That's what he actually did. And you can argue that's cheating, but... I'm here to kind of translate why he doesn't see it as cheating. And he doesn't see it as cheating because he's looking at the the meaning and the spirit of the whole experience that they're going through on this show, which is essentially a temporary break, a temporary freedom to behave as single people, and then to see afterwards, do you still want to go back into the relationship with your original partner? Do you still want to marry them? Do you get more clarity? 
And he's basically with his blind spot, his blind spot being reality, SE, he's ignored those concrete boundaries that Madeline and everyone else on the show have agreed to. Namely, yes, you have freedom to explore other relationships, but only within the confines of this show, only with one person, and only with one other person within the show, only on the show, right? Whereas Colby has taken the spirit of that, the essence, ignored all these concrete boundaries and taken it to the next level in his head. And he's saying that that's essentially a full-on open relationship. So I would act like we are in an open relationship, which Madeline did not actually agree to. You know, I'm just saying... Based on his type, that's how he would see it. It's not right or wrong. It's just that's how his mind operates. And he, because of his blind spot, he's not aware that no one else operates based on that. And then the other controversial thing that Colby does is he then tells Madeline that he's connected with these other girls and in her head, that means cheating. So in her head, he's saying, I cheated for your sake. He said it's for her sake. It's to make it real for her. So do you regret it or not? I regret the way I went about making it real. Yeah, absolutely. Who did he make it real for? You, obviously. You truly see it that way. That you did what you did for me. That was for me, to make it real for me, even though I didn't know anything about it. You know all about it. I told you about it. I don't know why we keep going back what? to the same conversation. Oh my God, this is so fucking great. This is literally insane. And again, he's only thinking from his own perspective. And what he means is that he only felt the need to explore elsewhere because of how insecure and hurt he feels with Madeline because Madeline came into the show not sure about him, not wanting to marry him. And he came in the show rejected. He basically came on the show with the intention to show Madeline what it's like to lose him. And then that didn't happen within the show. He couldn't achieve that because no one chose him. So then he's like, well, the, that's the spirit of this experience right to show madeline what it's like to be without me if i was with someone else so then he then outsourced it as he put it to other random girls in random clubs he doesn't see anything wrong with it because he's he feels he's still aligning with the spirit of the show and of the experiment not realizing that nobody else is going to see it that way because nobody else has that blind spot. And then the other thing he does, which could be seen as gaslighting, manipulation, is that he would, after their huge arguments, next morning, next day, say something stupid like, I think we are the strongest couple here. And why is he doing that? Because again, he's He's ignoring the reality, again, his blind spot, and being totally in his head and trying to still fish affirmation and reassurance from Madeline, which is F.E., extroverted feeling. If we stick to the example, we are the strongest couple here. In his head, he's thinking, despite how messed up we are, I feel we are still better than all these other couples on the show. And that's FI, that's introverted feeling. That's completely his opinion. It's not a fact. That's his view. That's his value. Whatever he thinks he defines as strongest couple, right? Whereas to Madeline, her type is based in reality and facts, SC and TI. So it's impossible for her to agree based on what has happened, what has then transpired, and other people's opinion that they are not the best couple. And then so she cannot get herself to lie to him and agree with him. And then he gets upset. He gets so upset, which then reveals his initial attention of why he said that. 
to get affirmation. You, you know, is Colby a narcissist? Is is he gaslighting? Is he emotionally manipulative? And, and you can argue, yes, yes, he is. But the flip side is, it, it works. It works for him. So it works for him in this relationship. So. If he wants Madeline that much, then you almost think, can you can you blame him for doing that? Because it seems like the only way that he could bury himself into Madeline's head. Um, literally, when Madeline is certain about Colby, when he is just being vulnerable and saying, "I want to marry you, I love you," she doesn't think about him. She doesn't think about him. She gets all complacent. Whereas she only starts obsessing about Colby. And having these deep conversations with Colby about feelings, after she's realized that she is on unsteady ground, and I think Colby, whose type has introverted sensing (SI), he's learned and observed this pattern after being with Madeline for a few years, and he's learned that this is what works for her, and I think ultimately. This couple is very addicted to the drama they have with each other, and until there is some major breakthrough in communication, in their self-reflection, I don't see this dynamic changing. So that's all I have to say, which is a lot.、Um, thank you for your patience and watching. If you like this content, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you wanted to have a chat with me about learning more about yourself and your relationships through personality type, then please find booking and contact details in the description box below.